Rack is commonly known as a way to build web applications in Ruby, but the Rack gem includes a lot of useful utilities, many of which Rails uses internally. Now, if you want to build a lightweight web app, you probably use a framework like Sinatra, but using Rack directly from scratch, you can learn a lot about these various utilities. Let me show you here. First, I'll run gem install Rack to ensure I have the latest version of Rack installed. And then I'm going to create a simple application here, a simple Rack app called Greeter. And I'll open that up in TextMate here. So to make this a Rack app, we need a Rack up file in here called config.ru. And in here, I'll make a class called Greeter and give it a call method, it takes an environment. So this is a simple Rack app. So we can return the status code 200, a hash of header options, and the response body, let's say, hello world. And we could tell it to run this application by calling run greeter.new, like that. And then start this app up by running the rack of command in the greeter directory, and this starts up on port 9292 by default. So now let's try visiting that page, localhost 9292, and we get this error. And I wanna show you several of the different utilities that Rack provides here. Um, one is Rack Lint, and you can see we get a lint error here saying that content type header is not found. So to be a proper Rack app, we need to respond with a content type header. And also notice how pretty this error message is here. So first of all, what is generating this and how does that work? Now, when you run that Rack up command, internally it's going to call start on this Rack server class here. And this is going to include several pieces of Rack middleware by default. And you can see the middleware that's included in the source code here. So what you can see is that by default it's going to include the Rack show exceptions middleware, which is going to capture the exceptions and make them nice and pretty output. And it includes Rack lint, which is going to check the format of your uh, Rack application and make sure it uh, responds properly. And it's also going to include Rack content length, which is going to uh, set the content length header and chunked, which is going to handle streaming responses. And then it also uses the common logger middleware to uh, log the request to a standard error. So it's nice to see that uh, it's automatically including all of this Rack middleware by default when you run the Rack up command. So that explains where this Rack lint exception is coming from and why the error message looks so pretty here. So let's fix this error and set that content type header. And we could do that instead of our response here, the hash of header options, set the content type, and I'll just set it to a uh, text slash plain for now. And I'll need to stop and start up my Rack up server again for it to pick up that change. And now when I reload the page, you can see it now says, hello world, it works. Now there's a lot more I want to do inside of this greeter class, but before I get into that, let's first organize this a little bit better. I'm going to move this into a separate file called greeter, and I'll place that inside of a lib directory here and make that greeter file, greeter.rb, and just paste that into here. So now that our greeter has moved into its own separate file, let me show you another cool piece of rack middleware called rack reloader. So what we could do to add a middleware to our application is call use, then pass in the class such as rack reloader. Now what this middleware does is it automatically reloads any required files every time you make a request. So this means we don't have to reload and restart the uh, rack app every time we uh, change the greeter class. Now the reloader has a 10 second cooldown by default, but we can change that to zero here. So that way it picks up the changes immediately. Now this time when I start up the rack server with the rack up command, I'm going to tell it to include the lib directory so that it can find that greeter class that we moved into there. And so now I can hit reload here and see that the application still works. And now when I change my greeter class here to say something different and then hit reload here, it's automatically going to pick up that change without restarting the application because we're using that reloader middleware. Really cool. Now in more complex scenarios, the reloader might not work very well. So there are other utilities that help do this, such as one called shotgun. You can check that out if you run into problems. Now writing out the full response like this every time isn't very convenient, especially if you have a lot of headers you need to pass in. So that is why Rack comes with something called Rack Response, which makes this more convenient. Uh, you could just pass in the body directly into this, such as hello, and that'll default to a 200 OK status. And then I can reload here and see that, well, it changed. And notice the text looks a little bit different because it's using a text HTML content type instead of text plain. Now, normally in your response, you want to put in some HTML, but who likes to put HTML directly in Ruby strings like this? 
Instead, my preference is to uh, add some kind of render method, which you can render out some kind of template, maybe an ERB template. And that's not really too hard to set up. So here we'll need to uh, require ERB and then define that render method real quick here, which takes a template. And first I'll take the path of this by calling expand path and pass in, let's make it relative to this file and put it inside of a views directory here, uh, pass in the template into here, and then um, that'll be relative to this file. And then I can call erb.new and read in that file. And then I can call result on this and then pass in the current binding so that we have access to all the methods defined here. So now I can just create that file inside of a views directory here called index.html.erb. And I'll just paste in some code here for a full HTML document with some styling and it just says hello world here. And then I could try this out by reloading this page. Hey, it works. We're now rendering out a full HTML document. Now currently our application is always responding in the same way, but you likely want it to behave differently depending on what the user requests. And you can do that by making a request object called rack request and then passing it in the environment variable that's passed into the call here. Now the request object that you're familiar with in Rails actually inherits from rack request. So this is actually going to have a lot of similar behavior. For example, you can call request.path to access the URL path that the user typed in to access this page. And you could make a case statement out of this to change the behavior depending on what the path is. For example, if it's the root URL, let's render this template. Um, otherwise, we'll just do a catch all here and that will render out some kind of 404 response. So let's say not found, and you can pass in a second argument here to the response instance class uh, and say 404 as a response. So now reloading this page will give us that same template, but passing in any other path here will just give us a not found result. So that works. Now let's say we want some way for the user to change the name they're greeted by, so we need some form field here for changing the name. So inside of the HTML template, I'll just paste in some code here for uh, creating a form that sends a post request to a change path and it's going to pass in a name parameter through a text field here. So now inside of our greeter app, we need to respond to that change request, I'm making a new win entry here. And for this, we'll just uh, respond back with the name the user typed in. So um, this we can access by calling request.params and passing in the at name attribute and so this params hash works very similar to Rails, except that the key here needs to be a string instead of a symbol. So now when I reload this page, I get my form. So let's try typing in a new name here, change name, and that's the response we get back. So that works. Now in this response, I want to do more than just simply output the name. I want to set a cookie and then redirect back to the root homepage. So I'm going to expand this out a bit and calling response.new like this, you can actually have the option of passing in a block, and this passes in a response object. Now there are a variety of ways you can interact with a response. You could, for example, use a square brackets here to assign header values if you want, but we don't need to do that here. Instead, we want to set the cookie directly by calling set cookie, and then we can pass in a value, let's call it greet, and then pass in the request params name here that the name is typed into the form. And then you could do a redirect by calling response.redirect and then passing in the URL you want to go to. Uh, let's just go to our root path. So now when I try filling out this form again with the name and click change name, it's actually going to redirect me back to the same page and assign that cookie. So now I just want to display the name that was assigned in this hello world call. So back in the HTML template, let's make this hello world call dynamic and let's call a method called greet name on our greeter. And then inside of that greeter class, we can define this method called greet name, and we want to use the value of the cookie. So we can access that by calling request.cookies and then calling greet on this because that's the name of the cookie we assigned. And then we'll have a default to world. Now this is actually going to not work because request is something that we don't have access to here. Let's turn it into an instance variable so we do have access to it outside of this call method here because that is where we assign it. So now when I reload this page, it now says hello Ruby because that is the name I assigned to the cookie. Now it's important to be aware that only one greeter object is instantiated throughout the entire application. So this means if I were to set any other instance variables inside of here, they would persist 
between requests, which could potentially cause some tricky issues. So instead, I think it's better to change the rackup file. So instead of instantiating the greeter here, instead you just pass in the class as a rack application. And this means you can define call as a class method onto here, and then you can instantiate a new greeter each time. So this way, there's no chance that instance variables will persist between requests. Uh, so let me do some renaming here, make initialize where we define that request instance variable. And then let me uh, call this response, and then we can call response from here, like that. Now another reason I did it this way is so that I can easily call finish on this rack response object that is returned. This will basically convert it to that array format that Rack expects. Now, it worked okay before, but this just ensures it works well with all middleware. Now, another thing that could use some improvement is the HTML document, because right now, I'm putting the CSS code directly inside of the HTML like this, but instead I think it would be better to use an external style sheet, use a link tag to reference it like this, where it's under style sheets, application CSS, that way I can keep everything outside of the HTML document. So this could exist under maybe a public directory, and then style sheets, and then add that application.css file inside of there. And then I'll just paste in that same CSS code that I had inside of the HTML. Now the problem is that our Rack application doesn't know how to serve these static files inside of the public directory. This solution might work fine in production where we have a separate server, but we need something to work here in development. Now there are a couple of different ways we can do this inside of Rack. Uh, one solution is to use a piece of Rack middleware called Rack Static. And this is really what it's designed to do, but I haven't had a whole lot of luck with Rack Static. So instead I'm going to use a different class here called Rack Cascade. Now this isn't middleware, so I'm actually going to instantiate this on the run call here called Rack Cascade. Dot new, and what this does is you actually pass it a, an array of multiple rack applications. And what it will do is it will hit the first rack app, and if it gets a 404 response, it's going to cascade down into the next rack application. So I can use this in combination with another rack endpoint called uh, rack file dot new, and then pass it a path that I want it to host files from, such as the public directory. So what this will do is this application will look in the public directory and try to serve static files inside of there. And if it doesn't find it, it'll return a 404 and the cascade call will cascade down to the next rack application. Now the reloader middleware won't pick up changes in the rack of files. So it's necessary to stop and start up the rack server for those changes to take effect. And so now when I try visiting my rack application again, it still works. Even though it's using an external style sheet, you can see at stylesheet slash application.css, it's hosting the style sheet fine there. Now let's say we want to protect this app with some simple authentication. What we could do is use this middleware called rack auth basic, and then pass in a block, and this accepts a username and a password arguments into here. And if this block returns true, then it allows access. So we could just say password equals secret, and that way we do some simple authentication. And then once you restart the Rack application and try visiting it again, you'll get some authentication. And as long as the password matches, you'll be able to log in and access the app. Now there's really so much great middleware that I can't cover it all here, but I hope this gives you some idea of different options you can do in a Rack application. Now I do wanna finish off though with testing Rack apps. Uh, let me create a new file here called uh, greetertest.rb. Now I'll just paste in some test code that I've already prepared. It looks something like this, where I'm using a mini test here for convenience to get something up quickly, and I'm loading in my greeter class here. Now I'm going to use something called rack mock request to easily mock out a request. It's great for testing. You just pass in a rack application such as our greeter class, and then you can call get post put and delete requests directly on that request mock request object, and then you can check the status on it. You can check the body response and so on. And here I'm testing the cookies and the redirect and everything that our Rack application does. And I can run those tests by calling Ruby greeter test.rb and that runs the test and everything passes. Now there's a lot more included inside of Rack that I haven't covered in this episode. For more information, check out the R docs. You can just browse through some of the various classes that Rack provides to get an idea of what you can do. And if you can't get enough, check out the Rack contrib project 
which includes a lot of useful utilities and middleware that you can use in your application. Well, that finishes up this episode on Rack. I hope this gave you some insight into what Rack includes and how it works, and maybe a better understanding of how Rails and other web frameworks use Rack internally. <laughs>